Hi, thank you. Thanks for, for being here. Thanks so much for being here, Isabel, and congratulations on the film. It's wonderful. There's so many things to it, so many different layers. There's one of the things I wanted to say th and to start off with is that there's there's something about it that feels to me as if you were fated to make this film. You have brought Philip Roth novels to the screen. You have brought here uh, this novel to the screen. You have got a, a previous film called The Secret Life of Words. In uh, your previous film, Learning to Drive, uh, Patricia Clarkson played a book critic. What was it about this film and this book that made you want to bring it to the screen? I just fell in love with the book. I, 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 you know, I discovered Penelope Fitzgerald many years ago in, in, you know, in a bookstore, and you know, I, I just, um, I read the cover, and it was about a woman wanting, wanting to open a bookstore, and, and that was my dream. I thought, you know, uh, uh, opening a bookstore was always my plan B. <laughs> so I thought, you know, well, I can I and I read it and I felt this really, really deep connection with with Florence Green, no? And and I always say, you know, Florence Green, it's me. And 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 you know, if I had lived in a little town, and and uh, probably this thing would happen to me too. And in fact, uh, part of the, the subtext of the book that's sort of in the, in the film and certainly in the story itself is that uh, Penelope Fitzgerald, who wrote the book, uh, she came to writing late in life. And something about the film and the story is about that strikes me is that it's about these decisions that we make in midlife uh, or kind of later than we sort of think that we would have made them. And they're left turns. They're, they're rebirths and they're reimaginings of our own lives. Was that something that you saw in the story as well? I saw him. I saw that, and also, I saw a woman really, you know, who's who has a very, very small and humble dream, and and he just she just want to do what she wants to do, and and uh, also a woman who had been uh, who has lived a very sheltered life, and then um, you know when she goes out there in reality, reality is tough, and um, and it's true. Penelope Fitzgerald had a very, very, very tough life. She started writing when she was 64. Um, once, or you know, she had three kids, and once her kids were settled, she she started. Wr well she wrote all her life, but she started publishing when when like or, s or writing as a discipline, like every day when when she was 64. Yeah. And this book is, is published in 78. So yep. yeah, yeah. The uh, and th by the way, the the woman who plays Florence is Emily Mortimer. Let's give her a round of applause because she's so terrific in this film. <laughs> And how did how did Emily come to the film, and how did the two of you see that character of Florence, and kind of work together to bring her to the screen? Um, every time I watch a film with uh, with Emily Mortimer, or I saw her in in Doll and M, and all you know all these things, I I always you know there was a also a connection. I thought this woman is really good. This actress, she has something. And also, I was convinced she she was really uh, you know a fan of of reading and and books. And and you know I didn't know she was also the daughter of, of John Mortimer, mm -hmm. who was a, a really good writer and an excellent uh, screenwriter. Um, you know we met in London. We start talking about the things that the the books we have read and the things that we like. And and I I you know she loved the script. I I love her. So you know we we said okay we want to do this thing together. And as you you know you probably have seen they are like. A 22 companies involved in the movie, so that's how things, you know, if you want to do a film, uh, a $50 million film about a superhero, it's an easy thing. If you want to do, you know, a modest film about a woman just opening a bookstore, it's, you know, it's, uh, it's heroic. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> so she was, well she was, uh, she was also always, you know, always with the film, we, because the film had, you know, we had the star date, and then, you know, something happened, and some, Financier said, you know, but why there is another a love story, and why they are not younger, and why, 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 and why at the end, uh, and then, well, you know, because the film will not be the film I want to do, and uh, then, you know, half of the uh, money fell off. Um, but she, Emily, was always, always with the project, saying, okay, you know, whenever, whenever you're ready, I will be ready. 
two things about her that that struck me. One is that uh, she does seem to have, as an actress, you're you're watching her and you really do sense that she has a, a rich interior life that you can see her thinking that she's working. She contains multitudes in so many ways, and so as a performer, that aspect really s- really satisfies that part of Florence. The other thing is is like a great book, you sort of find yourself. I find myself wanting to know more about her characters as things go on. She can, with a glance or a, or a bit of a look or even just the most reserved emotion, draw you in, right? Um, you know, I think there is a purity in her. There is not in lots of actresses of her generation. There is some truth and some honesty and some sweetness, who is a very genuine sweetness, not, not a saccharine sweetness. And and also, you know, I d- also I like to work with actors. You can go, you know, to have a drink. By the way, when you do Q and A's at this time, I- it's nice to have water, but <laughs> vodka <laughs> will be also really nice. <laughs> uh, um, and you know, you n- you need to. I mean, when you are together so many hours, you really have to have things to talk about. Yeah. And yeah. and with her, with Patricia, with Bill. These people, you really can talk about everything, and I, I don't want to say I direct them because it's uh, not, not true. Mm-hmm. You know, we share this experience. We we talk about many things. Mm-hmm. You know, love stories, painful stories, um, uh, books, books we love, books we hate, and and that was it. And they understood from the first moment what what was the film about. Mm-hmm. Bill, by the way, is of course the amazing Bill Nye, and let's give him a round of applause as well. So terrific. And how did Bill come to the film and and work with you on that character of Brundage? Bill, um, I always knew it's one of those actors you saw him, you know, playing like you know the the, the you know not the main character. And you always say, well, but this guy is amazing. I mean, everything he does, every little thing is is it's meaningful. Every gesture, and and I you know I really want him to be in the movie and. And when I sent her, uh, when I sent him the script, he he knew very well Penelope Fitzgerald work, mm-hmm. and and you know the only thing she s- he said is yeah, but in the script in the novel, he's always described as this person who looks like he has lots of dust on him, and I don't want to have dust. And I was like, okay, <laughs> no dust. <laughs> and yeah. yeah, you know, yeah. and also we had him like pff, you know three days. And uh, because he was he was doing like some Pokemon movie or something, <laughs> but thanks to the Pokemon movie, he can afford to be in yeah, this one. Yeah, so, yeah. God bless Pokemon. Well, he, he did a lot in those three days, and in fact, uh, at a previous Q and A, you and I and Emily were talking about how uh, there's just sort of something about him that tends to attract people, and he has got sort of that seductive quality to him that that uh, as he goes around, he draws them in, right? He, you know, he's a um, he's a Casanova. I <laughs> mean, um, I remember, um, you know, we being in this festival in Spain, in, in Valladolid, you know, presenting the movie, and it was, you know, in the in a big in a big opera theater in Valladolid, and then he came, very elegant and, and, and great like he is, and he came to the stage and standing ovation, and and then he said, it's it's I'm so moved to be here in Valladolid because. My first love was a, a girl named Teresa. Oh, and then she was from Valladolid. And she said, Teresa, are you here? <laughs> and then like, t- like uh, 50 women said, yes, yes, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and uh, uh, that, that was very funny. But the funny thing is, you know, uh, he does the same in every city in the world. Like, you know, you go to, <laughs> you go to Moscow and it's uh, Anastasia. <laughs> and <laughs> But yeah, he's a really, really seductive person, and um, and you know he likes three things in life, and it's uh, books and rock and roll and um, and soccer and especially the the Manchester United. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I love that bit at the at the theater. What a rascal! That's great. Uh, and and we're gonna take some questions from the audience in just one moment. But it, you mentioned just internationally, and I just want to say that this film did win Isabel uh, the Goya Award for Best Director, Best Screenplay, and for Best Film. So we should mark that and give that a round of applause, please. Thank you. 
the Goya is the is the Spanish equivalent of the Oscar. And this is your third film, I believe, with Patricia Clarkson, right? Who plays Violet? Yeah. Yeah. And and do you two have a, a, a shorthand now as you kind of go into these films that you kind of are able to say to her, I'd like this or a little of that? How does that work? I completely blackmail her to do this. <laughs> um, and I said, you know, you, you, you have to do You're always playing like very, you know, when, when we did Learning to Drive, you were this woman, very thoughtful. Well, a little hysterical, but yeah. Um, and then and I said, this is a compl complete beach, and I think you're going to have fun doing it, and also doing it in a uh, kind of a British accent, and an upper-class British accent. And um, the upper-class British accent, I don't think she's, she's really good, but who cares, really, because she's fantastic. Yeah. So, And also, she's, you know, she's... she's I always say she's a mixture of Blanche Dubois and Godzilla, and uh, <laughs> but she's 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 an amazing actress and a great friend, and and we we love have lots of fun together. Mm, yeah. That's terrific. If anybody has any questions, shoot up a hand really high. Yes, right here. Congratulations on such a beautiful movie. I just wanted to ask about kind of the color schemes that you chose, like especially in the bookshop. It it reminded me a little bit of Amelie the movie, just the greens and the blues and the reds and all the fashion, how it fit with the books, and in Bill Nye's house, it was just very bland. And I was wondering, like, just the process of choosing the fashion and the books and all the colors that went together, especially on such a modest budget, and especially Patricia Clarkson, her dresses were amazing. Um, yeah, no, their dresses are really, yeah. really, really amazing. I, yeah. I was wondering if you could explain to us just how you did all of that. Um, especially on a modest budget. I can't take credit about the wardrobe because the, the wardrobe designer is a person <laughs> called Marce Paloma, who I think she's, it's, she's really incredible. And it's also, she's really incredible with low budget. So, so I love her and I will, I, you know, I do all my movies with her. Um, and that's, it's her creation. She was the one you know, I there are colors. I was like, oh, you're gonna use this yellow because you know yellow is like bad luck or something. But she was like, it's the only one we have, and I said, oh, I love yellow. So, <laughs> um, and the colors and the you know the we with Jean Claude Larrier, uh, my director of photography, we work. Ma we saw many many movies of, of you know, the that period. Let's say. Some of Michael Powell movies, especially the red shoes, there are some red things who are like, you know, we can say it's a, it's an homage, but we we literally we copy it. Um, and for me, the most important thing is, I want her to be protected in that bookstore. I want to feel like it's the coziest place in the world, and 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 she's there, and okay, she goes for her walks, but this is her cave. This is her space and I want her to be happy here happy you know mm. momentarily but happy <laughs> colors also remind me in some ways of like Bertolucci's the conformist there's sort of a great sort of um, uh, kind of uh, kind of muted but also uh, kind of meaningful look to some of those to some of those colors um, I love the, the conform yeah, like great. all f yeah. filmmakers in the world I mean the conformist was like a, a, a very capital film for me um, but I, I, I have to say, for me, uh, we watched several Michael Powell movies, ex especially even in black and white, mm -hmm. because there is some, you know, a, a, a way of framing the landscape, even when they were shooting some of those films in studio, who I really, you know, I, I really love the way they use the landscape to, to, to feel like it's part of the life of these characters. And... There is some films, no? There is one I, I watched several times with Emily. Um, it's called uh, I Know Where I'm Going. It's a, f it's a film. It's one of my favorite films. Mm -hmm, yeah. It's in black and white, yeah. but we were inspired by it. Yeah. Thank you. One question I had in Penelope Fitzgerald's novel, the old house really is kind of like a character in the yeah. novel, uh, and it's a haunted space. There's a poltergeist in it, and I was wondering... Why did you decide not to, you know, use that? Um yeah, I struggle a lot with that poltergeist. I really struggle because I, you know, when you're adapting a novel you really admire, you're torn between the respect of the novel and also you have to do something different. And as you, you, you know very well the novel, so you know, you know, the ending, it's not this ending, and and the person who tells the story is not, you know, and the the character of Christine, 
is it's really different. So, but the mo my my struggle with the poltergeist is I I have to say I really didn't know how to do it without you know uh, without um, making the film some kind of uh, uh, caricature. So I thought it was very, very difficult. I think in terms of, you know, when you have to fill a poltergeist is, um, I didn't, I really didn't know how to, how to do it. So I said, okay, like the dust in, in, in Bill's naggy shoulders, <laughs> check. <laughs> but it's true. I mean, for me, I, I really like the poltergeist in the novel. I have to say, um, all the state of, of Penelope Fitzgerald, her daughter, Tina, and her husband, they were, you know, they were in the shoot. I, you know, they know, they knew the script very well, and they were very supportive, and, and they are very happy with the movie. And also, uh, Tina's, uh, Tina Fitzgerald, uh, well, it's not Tina Fitzgerald, because her father, or whatever. Uh, uh, Penelope Fitzgerald's daughter, Tina, uh, Christine, the, the character of the girl in the movie, is based on Christ in, in Tina, so. So, you know, I was kind of worried about what she was going to think, but she was happy. Maybe she lied, but she, she told me she was happy. <laughs> Congratulations on this beautiful movie. Felicidades por poder la estrena aquí en Nueva York. The chemistry between the actors is great, especially between Bill and Emily Mortimer, and also at the same time Fanny as well, the chemistry between Bill and Patricia Clarkson. And I was uh, wondering for you as a director, how important do you think it is, the table read and the rehearsals before start uh, filming, actually? Um, I have to say rehearsals are, are, are key, are really important at the same time. You know, when uh, Emily and Bill, they never rehearse because Emily was doing some movie in, in Canada and she came like two days before and we spent the whole time, you know, to uh, um, uh, with the wardrobe fittings. Um, I rehearse a lot with Honor, with, um, with the girl, uh, but she was, she was an amazing actress. And, and from the first, I mean, I, we saw maybe, I don't know, probably 100 girls to, because it was, you know, it was a, I didn't want, you know, like a cute, girl i wanted someone with really character and 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 she was great in the audition and 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 then but she is you know she she was 11 but she was acting she's she's, she's three um and yeah i rehearse a lot with her and with the boy the boy is cute and and i love i, lo I basically i choose him because i love his really thick glasses because our they're yeah I don't think uh, it's as good as, as Honor, but you know, I think she, she, he was, I mean, he was very, very right for that part. Uh, but I have to say, you know, Patricia came, you know, the day before, and they were, you know, going on and on about the, the yellow dr dress and the things on her hair and all these things. We didn't rehearse with them, but I was convinced they will, they, they, they will work and they will, they will have something together. I was, but it's one of those things you know. Let's talk about the scene at Bill's table, just in terms of chemistry, just to piggyback on that a little bit, because uh, between Emily and Bill at that table, there is so much chemistry, and yet it's also played so close to the vest, uh, and, and there's so much banked emotion going on. Let's talk about that scene specifically, Isabel, and what that was like, filming that scene at the table. Uh, the scene at the table, um, I remember, um, you know, we had like, you know, maybe two hours and a half to do that. And it's like 12 pages of the script. So uh, I remember said, okay, well, uh, first of all, you have to, to set up the table. And, and it's like, what set up the table? You know, you, there is the, you know, the, there is the, the, those uh, napkins and the cake is here and the tea thing. Okay, you go and do it. And and because I really need, I, I didn't know how to how to to film the rest. I didn't know. I was like very 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 upset about you know we just had this time. But once you once you you know you you are behind the camera and you have Bill and and you have Bill looking at her, everything makes sense. And uh, the scene was even longer. But I I you know uh, that morning before. 
shooting. I cut two pages because it was really, it was really too much. I love that the, the setting of the table became part of the scene, though. That like yeah. became became the working part for the actors to kind of get into the into the space. Yeah. Uh, I for me the best thing is is I I I said to Emily, joking, okay, when he's gonna say that about the courage, you 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 know, I want you know you you have a you know red in your cheeks, and she says okay, and and it's there. Yeah. yeah. You know. Like, yeah. found it peculiar that he invited her to tea, but that she served the tea and the food. How did that come about? Um, you know, I think it's the first time uh, he has guests at his, hou his house in, in you know, probably in, in 35 years. So, mm, you know, I'm from Spain. I don't really know about tea, but these British people, they knew. <laughs> so... You know, Emily said that was the thing to do. So I said, okay. <laughs> <laughs> there are a few other hands. I want to make sure that everybody on the right-hand side, there were a few. Yeah. And so I want to then jump into actually the, the notion of the, um, the Britishism and the, and the reserve and that scene on the beach and how it's so, I mean, it sort of reminded me of Brief Encounter and, and elements of, of British cinema that we just love so much in which there is so much going on, but there's so much also being so much held so close to them. Let's talk about that scene, how it, uh, how it evolved. You know, the, that, scene, um, that scene is not in the, in the novel. Um, for me, one of the things I, I, you know, reading the novel, my, my one, of the you know, one of my dreams is, okay, I want them a little more, you know, a little more time with them together. Um, and, you know, we, as always, you know, we have like, we were in a beach, like really far away from 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 we, because you know, in in one day sometimes we had like three locations. Um, and it was, you know, I think Bill and Emily, they are actors who really understand about restraint. You know, what is not to do. You know, it's less is more, and and the more contained and the more restrained, the 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 more you want uh, you as an audience want them together. And um, and I, you know, I it was, it was is one of those scenes I I was I dreamt for years. And and when we were there, and and she was with a gray coat, and and he comes, and everything makes sense. And and the body language is amazing. And that's not something I direct or I I ever dream. It's it's it belongs to them. You mentioned less is more. There's so much in this film that's so beautiful. Upon second viewings, there's so much even more because there's and there's the and then the third. <laughs> there's so many emotions, ladies and gentlemen. The film is the bookshop, and thank you so much, Isabel Krishak. Thank, thank you, you. <laughs> really.